Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I have a very cool new technique to show you. As you know, I'm always looking for ways to improve and advance my knowledge of miniature making. I love the traditional artistry of carefully handcrafted miniatures and also deeply appreciate new technology that's advancing this craft for the younger generations to come. It's a balance trying to incorporate both techniques into my craft, but it's all for the love of miniatures. That's why I really enjoy 3D modeling for making miniatures, and my newest toy takes that to another level. This is the Rebel Point Range 2, and it's a 3D scanner. 3D scanners basically scan the shape of an object and create a 3D model that you can use. I use my 3D models to print and decorate my dollhouse, but you can also use it for animation or anything else that uses 3D. The Range 2 3D scanner comes out of the box in this compact carrying case. Zip it open and the scanner along with all the accessories are safely protected in each of their compartments. This is the scanner itself and it has several cameras on the front. It's actually pretty lightweight. And this is the handheld tripod. Right out of the box, I screw the tripod in and grab the USB cord. The scanner itself is super easy to set up. I plug the smaller end into the back of the scanner and the other side to my computer. This cord has a protective screw mount that will ensure this cable doesn't get pulled out from the scanner in the middle of scanning a project. Don't try this at home, but here I'm showing you how the screw keeps the cord in place even when holding up the weight of the scanner itself. I'll be using this teddy bear as my first test subject because it has a lot of texture. I wanted to see if the scanner could pick up all the details of the fur. You can scan this by moving the scanner all the way around this bear and covering all the areas from head to paw. However, my workspace is pretty tight for me to get all the way around, so I decided to use this rotating tabletop. This is actually a rotating TV stand. So I can put the bear on top of that and rotate it instead of moving the scanner. Since this kit also came with this magic mat with all these circle dots for markers, I'll put that on my rotating tabletop as well. Put the bear on top and start your scan. Now I simply start the scan and slowly rotate the turntable to get all the different sides of the bear. This scanner is great at capturing all the small details. I do this slowly to ensure I capture all the details from all the different areas. There is even an option to scan in color. And you'll know you're doing that when you have blinking lights going off on the scanner. That mode will allow you to capture all the colors of the bear in addition to the shape. Once I have that scan, I'm able to create a STL file that I can print. Look at all that detail in this model. This little model was printed with standard gray resin in my resin 3D printer. You can see how all the texture of the fur is captured on the model. Now I can just paint him to match his real life counterparts. It is really incredible what a little bit of paint can do for a miniature. Next, I have this old pair of Nike Air Force sneakers from years ago. I'm scanning these all white sneakers because I wanted to see how well the scanner would pick up details even though everything is the same color. Here are the shoes all scanned. The Point software allows you to delete any miscellaneous areas that you've accidentally captured from the background. I had a lot of that because I have a pretty messy studio. As you can see, there are also a few holes in this model. So I'm able to just select those areas and click fill hole to close those up. I do the same thing for the bottom of the shoe because again, I couldn't scan underneath the shoe without picking it up. And here is the sneaker printed in 1 to 12 scale. Again, I'm just using standard gray resin and my resin printer for this. Since I wanted these in white, I went ahead and stuck these onto a piece of painter's tape. 
Then take it outside and spray paint the models in glossy white spray paint. This takes a really steady hand and it's a bit hard to do while filming, but it's my favorite part of the process as it's when you can really see the objects come to life. This is also a really cool way to test out colors for your shoes before you actually paint your real shoes. I think I'll actually turn the sneakers we made today into earrings, but you can use them for whatever you like. If you're not a sneakerhead, you can do this with any style of shoes that you have. Next, I scanned this gallon of wood glue. I didn't want the inside to be completely solid when I printed it, so I did a bit of modeling work to empty out the interior. This technique does take a bit of modeling knowledge, but it's definitely doable and it's easier than creating a model from scratch. The clear resin I use is really incredible. It would be crystal clear if I added a coat of gloss, but I like this frosted look because it replicates the real glue bottle really well. Add a label to the front and back, and this thing looks so realistic. Then I mix up some thin acrylic paint for the look of wood glue. I fill up a little squeeze bottle with the paint and then squeeze it into the model. The scanner is so simple to use and my brain was buzzing with ideas of what to scan next. Before I go through several more miniatures that I made, I wanted to show how the scanner can work wirelessly away from a computer. This is a phone mount that you can attach to the scanner and it'll hold your phone in place while you're scanning. And this is an external battery that you can attach to the phone mount for truly wireless scanning. That's a great option for those who want to scan objects that are typically found outdoors like cars, statues, benches, and so much more. If you're using the scanner with a phone, you would just need to download their app and use a wireless network to connect to the scanner. Here is another staple from my studio that I scanned, and it is my trusty Makita drill. I use mine all the time, so it just made sense to create a miniature version for my miniature world. If I wanted to model this from scratch, it would have taken so much time, but this scanner allowed me to do it in just minutes. As a random tip, I always glue my miniatures to a stick when I'm painting so I can better maneuver around. These drills will look amazing in a miniature garage. I've created so many miniatures with a scanner and I have so many more ideas of what to make next. This scanner is a great addition to my miniature making arsenal. I'm so excited to use it for even more complex shapes like food and clothing. Here is another tip when you're making dollhouse straws. I love using these wires that have a clear plastic coating. I just cut off the length I need and then pull out the interior wire. Now you have a straw that actually has an opening on the inside. I love showing you guys new tools and techniques that I'm incorporating into my work. This technique is perfect when I'm trying to make a model that is very complicated with a lot of edges and texture that's hard to create from scratch in a modeling software. I know it's not for everyone and that's completely okay. I hope you find this information helpful if you are starting your 3D modeling journey. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!